Hello. Okay. I don't know if you guys are going to know to come over to this one or not. Uh, let's see. No, you're not going to know. Okay, fair enough. Let's see if we can get everybody over here. Um, how do we do this? Oh, okay. 23 viewers. Let's see if that works. Um... Hopefully you guys can hear me on this one. Oh, yes. Okay, it's working. All right. Bear with me while I get reset up because I had everything all sorted and beautifully set up so I'd be able to use it super easy. And then I had to restart my computer, get all turn it off and turn it back on and um, seem to work. So let me just go to... Uh, so I can be able to see you guys on the live, your chat. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad. Thanks for sticking it out for me. Well, if you've been on one of my live streams before, you are fully aware that it, uh, it's got something like this has to happen because we can never start within like the first 15 minutes of when it's actually supposed to start. So let me just go ahead and um, get this live chat uh, open so I can see it and respond to you guys. Um, they never make any of this easy. Okay, cool. I'm just looking at my iPad now. I'm watching myself on the iPad trying to see what you guys are saying to make sure that, okay, here we go. Perfect. Um, trying to see what you guys are saying. I'm so glad that you're able to stick around. I promise I have a really good, um, presentation I'm going to go through that I think you guys are going to, um, find very helpful so i i hope that uh it will be worth your your time so just give me one second um okay i'm gonna pop this out just so i can see your chats aloha oh amazing oh all my favorite people are here already um dave's here marcelo's here sarah's here lisa's here oh brilliant you guys i when stuff like this happens, it makes it even better when I see your names pop up. Um, any, a bunch of you, Kim's here, um, loads of you that I'm very familiar with. So it's, it makes it, um, it makes me less frustrated, I guess, when I see that, uh, that these familiar names. Galermo's here. Um, oh yeah, we have, oh amazing, thanks guys. <gasps> oh, so good, okay, perfect. Oh, thanks Kim. What's your London Underground experience? Okay, we're gonna, awesome. Um, oh, Tripax, you're here, hello, how's it going? Oh, it's good to see everybody. All right, cool, enough, enough of me saying this. Should we get to the good stuff now? Um, okay, so I'm just gonna get this all sorted. Oh, you guys are saying such nice things to me. Thank you, because I was literally about to throw this computer against the wall. Um, okay, just updating this. I can see myself now. I want, I'm going to be screen sharing in a second, so I just want to make sure that this is. Um, oh, thanks, Penny. I'm glad you can hear me. Thanks for letting me know. Hi, Kathy. Oh, so many of you. Good, familiar faces. Happy to see it. So great. So great. Okay, cool. So we're good. We got the chat open. Um, where's my presentation? Got to get the keynote open. So let's do that. How is everyone doing today? I'm so glad you can hear my voice. It's such a, um, a good thing to have, I think, as some of you were saying, if only I knew sign language and only you guys knew sign language, but you know, um, but no, really great to have you guys. Uh, if you could also let me know, like, how did you know? I'm guessing a lot of you got my email. I know about 350 of you signed up to get my, um, get alerts through email for the show, but then also you can, some of you probably got a notification. Um, yeah, I've been planning this live stream for uh, ages now, and um, a couple of weeks at least, and uh, I think you guys are gonna really like it, and I'm, I've been, this is a topic that I have been toying with a lot lately, so, oh, hi, Vega. Um, 
Oh, amazing. Okay. All right. I'll get into it now. I could get distracted all day with saying hi to everyone and stuff. So yeah. So um, for those of you who might be a little bit newer to the channel, I'm Jess. I run Love in London and um, it is a channel where you, I teach you guys how to have the best experience when you come to London. So um I do also a little bit of Europe and stuff, but it's mostly London. I lived here for four years. I love it. I'm um, originally from New York, but I love to teach people how to um, experience this city and the more local side of it. So what we're going to go through today is the top mistakes that people usually make when they come to visit London. And uh, I th we have five we're going to get through. Um, the good news is I've actually made all these mistakes myself the first time that I came to London, but let's go into it. I have a great little presentation to, um, we're going to go through the mistakes and then I'm going to also tell you how to fix them and to avoid making them. So, okay, cool. So if you bear with me two seconds, I'm going to do the screen share so you can see. Um, I, if you were on my live stream last time, I know that the screen share wasn't working particularly well. So I will, I'm watching on my iPad on the side here so that I can see if um, the presentation goes away. All right, let's share. Cool. So we are going to do a Q&A. Um, the Q&A is going to be at the end of the show. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the presentation. I have a special freebie for you guys at the end of it. So we're going to talk about that. And then I'm going to do open it up to Q&A and we'll talk about anything London that you want. So let's go ahead and play this and see if that's working. Yep. Okay, cool. Awesome. Hide that. That will hide in a second. Cool. So the top mistakes that tourists make when visiting London. Let me just make sure that this is actually working. Um, nope. Is it? No, not, maybe not. Let's see. Okay. We'll go back to doing it this way so you can actually see it. Um, sorry, one sec, guys. Bear with me. Technical difficulties, as always. Okay. Um, just trying to make it so that you don't have to view. Slide only, can do that. Zoom in a bit. No, okay. We'll do it this way. Cool, sorry if that's a little bit hard, it's hard to see. Hopefully I can, won't be too bad. Okay, perfect, that should be good. Okay, so first of all, let's hear, where are you guys from? Um, I know a load of you are from the US. We have actually a lot of people from the UK as well, but we've also had loads of people on our live streams recently that are from um, Argentina and loads from Singapore. And oh, well, yeah, I wanna hear where you're from. So put it in the comments. If you're not sure how to get to the comments and to the live chat, it is, if you're on your like an iPad, it's in the bottom right corner. It'll say live chat and you can pop out the, uh, pop out the screen. So let's see. Oh, we have Mexico, Argentina. Hi, Julian. Barbados. Very cool. India. We Yeah, we've had loads of people from India recently. That's awesome. San Diego, Blooming to Paris. Um, Glasgow. Czech Republic. Oh, I love Prague. Um, who doesn't though? Texas. Italy. Oh, I, Vega. I didn't know you were from Italy. Very cool. I love Italy. Um, Ben's from the UK. Adams, Glasgow. TR, India. Um, Jessica from Oregon. South Africa from Danette, Pennsylvania, Boston. Cool. Okay, so we do have loads of people. I was a little bit worried about you guys in the U.S. and south of the U.S. Um, for the time for this show, but um, if I did it too late, I, it would be dark and it wouldn't look so good. Dave, I know you're from you're from South Carolina and Honolulu. Oh, amazing! So cool. Oh, brilliant. Okay, perfect. So, and now I want to know when are you going to be in London? If I have a feeling a lot of you are probably going to be here sometime in the next month or two because we're about to get into the busiest month in London, um, which is August. We have loads and loads and loads of people that come to visit, but uh, September is quite busy as well. And then I know also a lot of you are planning way ahead and not coming until sometime in the middle of next year. So. It would be cool to hear when you guys are coming. 
um, October, DY said October, London in December, Carrie, um, Olive, oh cool, Olive, you're here in about a month, Robert's in a week, um, yep, Dave's, Dave's coming really soon, hey Zeus, December 24th, amazing, Christmas Eve, Lisa's in December, Penny's October, October's really a really nice time to come, I think you'll really enjoy it, Sarah said she'll be back in November for like four weeks, oh awesome, I didn't know you are going to come for so long. Um, Cool. Oh, Ronnie's going to be in here November, which is when Bonfire Night is. That's, yeah, exactly. End of August, Aunt Kay. Um, Vega's going to be here 25th of August to the 4th of September. Marcelo, yep, in, um, in November. Cool. Awesome. So we kind of have a mix. It looks like actually most of you, though, are actually going to be here this year and not Although Esperanza just said hopefully next summer I'll be graduating from high school and want to come for my graduation present. That would be so cool. That would be awesome. I did a Europe trip after I graduated school. So that would be um, college, though, not, high, not, not high school. Um, oh, Lisa said she picked December to see all that London does for the holidays. Oh, Lisa, London does the holidays so well. I'm sure you've seen my Christmas in London video, but I mean, it doesn't even do it justice, I don't think. It's such a great city to be when it's December. It's just so much fun. Oh, amazing. So good to hear. Okay, cool. So why did I should just talk about this topic? Well, first of all, I made a lot of mistakes on my first visit to London. This was back in 2009. I came for four days when I was studying abroad. This was at the end of my study abroad trip. Um, I was not even 21 yet, uh, and I just made, I had a great time and I loved London, but I just didn't do anything right. I really just like, I look back on what I did and I just can't believe I did what I did. But um, So I want you guys to be able to learn from those mistakes I made and also other mistakes that I see other people from the community making or that have told me the mistakes they've made when they've gone. If we can save you from making those mistakes, then I think that's a win-win, really. You can save time and money. We're all short on time when we come when you, you're on holiday. And then obviously, if you can save money, that's always a good thing. Also, uh, in our Love in London Facebook community, I put out um, two different topics, one of them being this one. And I said, which one would you guys rather have as a live show? And 100% of the people said they wanted this one. Um, so I kind of didn't have any choice but to choose this one, but I was really happy to do it. So uh, I was glad that everyone picked this one. So um, just so you know, we are going to talk about mistakes that people make, but remember that it is totally okay if you do make mistakes when you're here. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Part of the fun of traveling, especially abroad, is that you make mistakes and you have great stories from it. So don't worry. And also, if you make a mistake in London, it's not nothing's going to be too detrimental. You won't have, um, you won't be like, I don't know, you won't have any major problems. There will always be a way to fix it or a way out. So you're totally fine. But that being said, if I can help you to not make so many mistakes, then I think that's great. Um, so mistake number one only visiting the most touristy, quote unquote, areas of London. So if you ask me which areas those are, this is a probably the biggest, quote unquote, touristy areas in London. So we have Leicester Square and Piccadilly Circus. Those are really, really popular to visit. Uh, Westminster, which is quite obvious, that's the area where Big Ben or um, slash Elizabeth Tower is. That's where the Houses of Parliament is. Um, 10 Downing Street, which is where the Prime Minister lives. There's loads of stuff right in that area. Westminster Abbey, of course. How did I forget that one? Uh, Tower Hill is also the same thing. So, of course, that's where Tower of London is, and that's where you um, can cross Tower Bridge. That's a really busy, popular area because loads of people want to visit Tower of London. Uh, the London Eye, the area right around it, because it's right next to West Westminster Bridge. Everyone loves taking photos there of Big Ben. Um, everyone loves to go on the Love London Eye. There's also the London Aquarium right there. I think there's some kind of like Shrek something as well. Um, that gets so packed as well. And then also Trafalgar Square, because that's another really popular um, spot for tourists to visit. So why is it a mistake to only visit those areas? now? Let me get this straight. I'm not saying don't go and visit these areas. I know everybody's going to want to go see Big Ben. Everyone's going to want to go see Trafalgar Square, and that's totally fine. The mistake is where you don't venture beyond those areas. And the reason there are mistakes is that 
it is, gets so crowded in those areas that if you spend more than like an hour or so within those crowds, I think you're probably going to get quite stressed out. I know that I would. Uh, it's a lot, especially if you come in the summer, it's a lot of people to handle. It's just a lot of stuff happening. So that's one reason. Um, another is that you're never really going to find any locals here. So if you want to interact with the locals, which is such a great way to experience the city, you're not going to find anybody um, there. In fact, Londoners like avoid those areas at all costs. It's kind of like when you go to New York and um, New Yorkers are the same way about Times Square. If you have to kind of transit through Times Square, you're like, no, the same thing for us. Every time I have to go through, like um, if I have to get off the tube at Leicester Square, I'm like, oh God, it's gonna be so crowded. So yeah. Um, it's also hard to find good food and drinks there. Uh, if you do find places to eat or to drink, quite often they're either really not good, as in the quality of the food or the drinks is not very good, or it's just completely overpriced. So uh, yeah, that's just characteristic of touristy areas, I think anywhere in the, real, in the world really. And also there's just not much character. These are areas that are catering to the tourists, and yes, there's some really world famous sites there, but they they're just not like the character or the heart of London, which you can discover when you get out of those areas more. And it can be quite manufactured. You might see a pub in one of these areas and, and think that it seems quite authentic, but actually it's just kind of made to put it on a show for, for tourists and to charge them a lot of money and seem like it's authentic, but actually it's, it's not really. So um, it's good to get beyond those areas so you can experience the real London. So how to fix this mistake. So if you want to get really extreme here, you could completely avoid these areas. So that being said, if it's your first time to London, I totally appreciate you probably aren't going to want to do that. That's completely fine. If you visited a couple times before, it's you can if you've seen all that stuff, then why not just give it all a pass and try completely new areas you've never experienced before. You can also research ahead of time for hidden gems nearby these areas. So if you know you're going to be going to the London Eye, uh, you're going to go wait online, and then you're going to probably want to get some food after, doing some research and finding out where um, you can find some food that's not quite so touristy, but that comes quite recommended. Maybe like a 20 minute walk away or something like that. Knowing that ahead of time will help to make that um, transition easier. Also, obviously, just venture out to the less touristy areas. To start you off, um, there are loads of, I guess what you'd call less touristy areas that have more character and quite interesting to explore. Um, so to start you off, I have a video that's about the five less touristy areas to visit in London that I recommend. It's a really good starting point. Um, we talk about Camden, um, Shoreditch, and uh, three other ones that I think that you'll really like. So have a, when we're done with the show, have a watch of that video. It will definitely be a really good start for you. Another way to be able to do this is explore some attractions that are not within in very central London. So for example, the Science Museum, even like the Natural History Museum, they're in um, Kensington. Kensington's a much more um, within more of like a local area. It's, it's a, actually quite a beautiful area. Or there's the Wimbledon Tennis Museum, which is a really, really good museum if you like tennis. I definitely, I don't even really like tennis particularly, but I actually really love that museum. Uh, so if you were to venture out to Wimbledon Museum, you could also go to Wimbledon Village, which is an actual proper village. It's beautiful. And uh, have a, a really nice pub lunch, or there's loads of restaurants and stuff there. Also, book accommodation in local areas. So instead of staying in very central London, find a place that is in one of those areas that is in the video or that's in um, my series about where to stay in London. And you can use that as a point where you can explore a local neighborhood. So you can walk out of your hotel and find some place, a cute little cafe for breakfast, or you can ask the concierge if there's any um, things that you should check out around the area that maybe are lesser known. They'll be able to give you really good recommendations. Um, so yeah, it's a really good place to start for finding local areas to that I actually recommend that you stay is this video series, Where to Stay in London, plus it includes a free ebook, and I have so many accommodation recommendations 
for each of those areas plus beyond that. So it's completely free. You can just download it right from the video. Cool. Sounds good. Um, all right, so mistake number two, planning too many things to do in one day. I know a lot of you are guilty of this, okay? So why is this a mistake? First of all, it is absolutely exhausting. Don't forget you are on vacation. I understand that for a lot of you, this might be the only time that you're visiting London, but remember that you probably are gonna be jet lagged. You're gonna be really tired from walking around. You're doing a lot, you're experiencing a lot, and if you plan too many things in one day, instead of enjoying those things that you've planned, you're just gonna think about how tired you are or how hungry you are and not really care about whatever you're experiencing. Also, um, you're going to be end up probably spending a lot of time either waiting in line to go into these things that you want to do or on transportation. That's not very fun. And it also leaves no wiggle room for things for you to discover while you're there. So you could find something in the neighborhood where you're staying, like a, a cool little food festival that you want to check out, but you don't have any time to. You might walk around and see a shop that you'd actually like to spend an hour or so in and get some clothes. There's little um, events that are always going on around the city, but if you have everything planned out already, you won't have any time to experience something like that. Guillermo, Guillermo said, I did the mistake number two. My wife was so tired. It's okay, Guillermo, so many people do. Don't worry, it's totally fine. So how do we fix this mistake? So my advice is to only plan uh, one main thing to do each day or two things that are within walking distance of each other. Learn to be okay with not having every moment of your trip planned out because then it will help you to be able to experience things that you come along when you're like walking around and just exploring on foot. So there you go, walk around and explore on your own, then choose what to do. It gives you a lot more flexibility. You also won't feel rushed. Uh, you can take more time to have a coffee or to have a meal. And um, just anytime you, you find something that you want to check out, you can actually enjoy it. Cool. I see loads of you are in the chat. Awesome. If you have a question, um, make sure you save it to the end and we'll do a um, we'll do Q&A at the end. So hold on to that question and I will definitely get to those. Cool, so mistake number three, assuming that everything in London is close together, as in like proximity wise. So why is this mistake? Well, nobody realizes until they get here just how big London is. Even just very central London is quite big, but then when you start to wanna venture out a little bit long to a little bit more local areas, it is quite expansive. So Assuming that it's all close together, it means that you are probably not taking into account travel time when you're doing your planning of your itinerary, which could mean that you either are um, planning too much in a day and you won't actually have time to do it because you haven't accounted for how much time it will take to get to everything, but also it means that it could be you could be spending way too much time of your day on public transportation, getting back and forth to everything that you want to do. Um, so, and only seeing central London is uh, less of a local experience. So if you get here and you realize, oh my gosh, this place is actually so big, if you kind of only stick to central London, then you're really going to miss out on that local experience. So here's an example of what I often see people doing with their itineraries. So let's just say that this is your list of things that you want to do on, let's say, day one of your visit to London. So you have the Natural History Museum. Um, you've heard from, um, let's say you've heard from me actually, that Andina, this rest, Peruvian restaurant is really good for lunch, so you want to go there and that's in Shoreditch. There's the Tate Modern Viewing Deck, that's completely free, so that's a really great one. Uh, then you definitely want to make sure you get to Harrods and you've gotten a recommendation from maybe me again because I do love Polpo. Um, Polpo, which is in Chelsea for dinner. So if we add up all that transportation time, not counting traffic, and also not counting getting to the Natural History Museum and home from the Polpo um, restaurant. You're spending over two hours of your day on a bus, the underground, and walking. So if you're only out and about in London for 10 hours of the day, that means you've spent 20% of your day on public transportation, which 
that's not very fun. I mean, like the underground's kind of cool, but it's not that cool, guys. Like you don't want to spend two hours a day on it, I promise. So what you could have done instead uh, is if you stick with one area, then you can see actually a lot more. So this is an example of what I would have done instead. So you get to the Natural History Museum, and then you see, oh, hey, the Science Museum is right next door. Let's go check out the Science Museum. So now you've seen two museums before lunch. Then you, um, you've checked out the food and op uh, restaurant options around the area, and you've heard from me that the Ampersand Hotel is really a good afternoon tea. Also, the Orangery does. So you can either stop there for lunch or for afternoon tea. If you go during the week, you don't even probably need a reservation. It's usually quite quiet. Then you realize Howard's is actually only about a 10 minute walk away. You get to Howard's, spend about an hour in there. And after that, you realize that Hyde Park's only about a five minute walk away. So you go and spend another hour in Hyde Park. And then you make your way over to Polpo in Chelsea, which is about a 15 minute bus ride. So all together, if you add that up, it's only been about an hour, pretty much all walking. And then whatever your transport is to or from the hotel. So. That's all keeping everything within one area. You actually get to see way more when you do it that way. And if you've got to give yourself some leeway, you can also discover some things that you might not have um, realized were either in the same area or just that they existed at all. And then to cover a couple of the other things that were in the itinerary, uh, if you want to go to, if you're really set on going to Andina for lunch and then maybe doing a street art tour in Shoreditch, they're really close together. And then you could go perhaps in the morning instead of going to the Tate um, Modern's viewing deck, you could go to the Sky Garden before 10 a.m. without an appointment and it's free. You can stop at Dirty Bones for a dinner, that's again in Shoreditch, so this is all like within a 10 minute walking distance of each other. And then you're in a great place for having um, your do-it-yourself bar crawl and having lots of drinks right in Shoreditch. Again, it's only like one hour of walking plus your transportation to your from your hotel. So in these two days, you've actually seen way more than if you had just gone back and forth and spent all that time on public transportation. Okay, kind of a long-winded example, but I hope that kind of makes sense and it helps you to realize like how big the city is and actually if you can pick one or two things in the same area and clump them together and then go from there, you can actually see and experience more and probably more stuff that you, you'll enjoy. How to fix it, include travel time in your planning. So um, when you're making your itinerary, use Google Maps. And make sure when you're using it to put in an approximate time of day. So for example, if you um, are want to take an Uber to get to dinner, remember that's probably going to be rush hour if it's during the week. So it's actually probably going to take a lot longer for an Uber to get to where you're going. So usually not like where you can, you can put in and say it's going to be for this time of day, then that helps. Uh, pick one or two major things to do in one area and then stay there for the day, like we talked about. And be open to walking around and finding things to do as opposed to having every single thing planned out. So, mistake number four. Only trying fish and chips as quote unquote local cuisine. So why is this a mistake? British food is a lot more than fish and chips, believe me. And I will tell you what else it is in the next slide. Uh, also, London has incredible world cuisines. It's very similar to New York and possibly even better in the fact that you can get any type of food you would ever want in the city and you can find a really, really good place that does it for pretty much any type of budget. So definitely branch away from British food. Have like a little bit if you want, but definitely explore other cuisines while you're here. Also, depending on where you go, um, fish and chips, if it's not very good, it's just a poor example of, of how food is in London and, and some pubs don't do it very well. So how to fix it. If you want English cuisine, here are some options. You can try bangers and mash, which is uh, sausages and mashed potatoes. Um, a full English breakfast. I don't particularly like this, but a lot of people really love it. It, um, I believe it has um, black pudding, a, a fried tomato, baked beans, I think there's eggs, and there's uh, sausages, and I think maybe one or two other things. If you look it up, you'll be able to see a good picture of it. There's pie and mash, so they do savory pies here with mashed potatoes. Sunday roast, you guys have heard me talk about that all the time. Eat and mess is a dessert. It's really lovely in the summer. It's essentially um, crumbled meringue with um, all like different types of varied fruit. 
cockles, which is a type of clam, I believe it is, and that's an East London thing, but you can get those even in the grocery store. Bread and butter pudding is a really yummy dessert, and stock, sticky toffee pudding is as well, has like caramel. Um, so, and if you still want that fish and chips, make sure you get a good one, and I always recommend Poppies. There's one in, there's two in Spitalfields, and one in, I believe it's Camden now. And then experience the different types of cuisines. So Thai is really good here. Indian is fabulous in London. London is very famous for its Indian food. Vietnamese, Italian, Chinese, anything, you name it. Peruvian is like um, Andina that I recommend before. That's Peruvian. It's really lovely. So mistake number five, not making plans for food. Now, I know I'm kind of contradicting myself a little bit because I was saying not to have too much planned out. but there is a point where, in a few instances, where you want to actually make sure that you have some, some kind of plan for food. So when that you want a plan is when you're trying to eat during peak meal time. So um, Monday to Thursday, that's 7 p.m. to 9.30 for dinner, uh, 6 p.m. to 10 on Fridays, about 11 to 2.30 and 6 to 10 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. So those are really busy and a lot of times reservations will be booked up or places will be completely full if you're trying to just wing it and find some place to eat. If you're in a really touristy area, that can be the case as well. You might struggle to find something that uh, has a table. Uh, when you have limited time to eat, that could be a struggle because if you can't find some place that has a table or if you have a certain budget you're trying to stick to, that's a little bit stressful to try to find some place that fits all of that and yeah, you can get into. And then also there's um, more higher end and popular restaurants you're going to want to definitely reserve in advance because they get booked up really fast. Sometimes it's completely fine to pick a food spot off the cuff and I definitely recommend that if you're not in super touristy areas, um, especially lunchtime's on the weekdays because it's you usually can get a table it's not too crowded at that point but um, having even having like a couple of places that even if you don't make a reservation that can be really helpful because just knowing in a couple of places in the area that you could possibly go to so why is this a mistake everything good might be booked up, like I said. So if, um, for example, I went to Soho with some friends uh, a couple of weeks ago, Friday at eight o'clock at night. I have no idea why I did this, but we did not book a reservation and we really struggled to find some place that would take four of us before like 10 o'clock at night. We did eventually find some place. So if you get stuck there, try May Mayfair Kitchen, it's pretty good. Um, but, that happens on quite often on the weekends. Also, if you're like me and like you, you're trying to find some place to eat and you get hungrier and hungrier, you might get hangry. I totally get hangry. And when that happens, bad choices can happen. I can pick really crap restaurants or I get a little snippy with my husband or something. And I try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, and it's just too easy to fall into tourist traps when you're really hungry and stuck for a place to eat and you can get bad food, that's just too expensive. And I'm totally guilty of this. I did this when I came the first time in 2009. I was really hungry and we just found some crappy pub and I had not very good fish and chips and I was very disappointed. So how to fix this? You can eat at off peak time, so lunchtime on weekdays, um, before six o'clock for an early dinner, which actually lots of times you can get cocktail or happy hour on food and or drinks. Um, research a few options ahead of time in the area so you can have backups if your number one place isn't uh, taking any anybody in. Make a reservation when you can, even if just an hour before. I've like called places that I've, if I've been out and about and I wanna go to dinner, um, on a Friday, then I've literally called places like 20 minutes before I've arrived and said, I'm coming, like, do you have a table? And then just gotten them to reserve it. So even if you're only, you're looking for dinner like half an hour away, try to reserve if you can. And if you can't reserve online, just call them or ask your concierge to call the, the restaurant. Also, just a little side tip, um, some high-end restaurants, including Michelin star restaurants, offer deals during the week. So if you check on bookatable.com and opentable.com, you might be able to take advantage of those. Okay, so that's all the mistakes. I got through all of them. Um, hopefully that was helpful for you guys. So I do have a special uh, freebie that I was telling you about in the beginning. So let's go through that. 
So by now, I think a load of you know about the local guide to London. I made this guide with all of these mistakes that I made myself and that I'm telling you guys about with all of them in mind. It's in order to help you prevent make those mistakes. So there's three parts to the guide. There's the ebook, which is essentially over 70 pages of my best recommendations of things to do, see, eat, and drink in London. It's the local stuff. It's not any tourist traps. It helps you to weed out the bad stuff and find the really good hidden gems all over the city. It's digital, so you also don't have to like carry on around a big book. You can literally just save it to your phone and pull it out on your phone if you want. Uh, it also includes a digital map. So my thing about traditional guidebooks is that, especially in a city like London that is so big, if you, you know, you go sightseeing for a little bit and you're like, you know what, I'm hungry, let's try to find something in the guidebook to go eat at. You pull out the guidebook and you have no idea what area each, even if it tells you what neighborhood that a recommendation's in, how are you supposed to know where that neighborhood is or how far it is to get there? unless you just keep pulling out your phone and using your data and figuring out the directions and not saying, oh, nope, that one's too far away, let's try to find another one. Nope, that one's 40 minutes away, let's try that. So that's why I made this digital guide for you guys because what you can do is if you just need a place um, to eat or drink or something to do on a whim, you can pull the map out on your phone and see what's which of my recommendations are around you and then use it to get to, to get um, directions to whatever you end up wanting to do. So um, I, I actually use this myself. I made a version of this before I even thought about doing the local guide to London and then now it's actually, this is exactly what I use and when I'm out and about and I'm like, hmm, I need some lunch, I pull it out and I see what's around me and um, pick one of the spots. So I think it will definitely help you, and it'll help you to stay away from the tourist spots and actually find the um, all the like little hidden gems that I've recommended for you in the guide. Also, uh, you get a Facebook membership to our Facebook community. We have about 80 people in the community so far. It's everybody who's already bought the local guide to London. And it is such good fun, guys. Like, we're really enjoying it. If you're in the, if you, oh, shoot, you can't see me, can you? Oh, perfect, you can see me. Um, if you're in the Facebook group, actually, if you can um, give a little holler in the live chat. I think I've been loving it. I think everyone's been finding it really helpful. Essentially, what how it's uh, great for everyone is that it helps you to connect with other people who are coming to London, which could be great for solo travelers, but also just to chat with anybody who's coming over here. And also people have been putting questions in there that I myself help to answer, but then also other people uh, who visited London before or who have already found the answer, they're happy to help as well. So it's a really great way to get your questions for your trip answered quickly and with lots of help. So it's been really great. I absolutely love being in there. It's such a joy to like go in and check on it every day and see what everybody's been up to. And also we've had people sharing photos from their trip and saying um, that they visited places in the guide and they're having a great time and it's just been such good fun. Here's another example. Um, Kenna asked, does anyone uh, been asked for their immunization records at customs and a bunch of people responded and the answer was no spoiler alert and also what I've been doing is sometimes when I find a really good place uh, recently after the publication of the guide I'll post the recommendation in um, in the group so like I went to Roti Kai uh, near Marble Arch a couple of weeks ago and that was really good and I just had to share it so it's another way to get some more recommendations. So what I've done is I want everyone to be able to get this depending on whatever your situation is. So I have three different packages. Um, the first one is the taste of local package. So you just get the ebook and uh, yeah, you get everything in the ebook, but nothing else, but that's the um, cheapest package at 29 pounds. Then there's the almost a local package where you get the ebook, the map and the membership to the Love and London Facebook community. So that is, you'll get everything that we've just talked about. 
And then the lifetime local package is for people who might be coming back in the next couple of years. Instead of having to buy the updated version next year, you automatically get the updated version completely for free. It gets sent right to you and you don't have to worry about it. So this, I'm so excited about this special bonus. Um, so what I'm offering now, I've just created a brand new ebook. It's called How to Find Special Events in London. And it's essentially a PDF guide that helps um, helps you find out what cool special events are happening when you go to visit London. So it's broken down month by month, and oops, it's broken down month month by month. And I have a list of the the events that I recommend for each month. But then I also tell you how to find other uh, little small pop ups and things like that when you're visiting that I haven't covered yet. So. Um, there's always new things being added and it would be hard for me to give you everything for the month because like new things pop up every single day and as we get closer and closer to whatever month you're visiting new stuff will pop up that um, you'll definitely want like want to know about so I tell you how to find those easily along with my top recommendations of what to do. So um, it includes stuff for everyone's budget. So there's free stuff in there, there's ticketed events, it, all kinds of things. I know people always ask about Christmas Day and um, New Year's, what to do, I have stuff in there about that. So, so to get this guy, the only way that you can get this ebook is um, I'm offering it completely for free to anybody that is uh, purchases the almost a local or lifetime local guide within the next 48 hours. So it's a special little freebie for anybody that ends up buying it. Um, if also if, if any of you have already purchased either of those um, either of those packages, it, you'll automatically be getting this. So don't you worry. But uh, yeah, so in the next 48 hours, if uh, for anyone who purchases these two packages, you will get this free guide as well. So the way that you can go ahead and purchase the guide with the bonus is just go to loveinlondon.com slash live show bonus. Um, I'm going to put a link in the live chat of the video here. And if you're watching this recorded, it will also be in the video description so you can grab it there. Uh, so you have until the Saturday at 8 p.m. London time to get the free bonus. Cool. Okay. So... We've gone through everything. Thank you so much, guys, for hanging around and for your patience. I hope you found everything super helpful. Um, I'm going to open this up to questions now, so let's pop back to my face. It has gotten dark since, since you've seen me, but let's get out of the screen share so you can see me. Perfect. Okay, cool. Sorry it's quite dark, but um, that's the skin. Oh, it's so cloudy today. We have had such weird weather. It's been so strange here. Um, let me get the live chat back open. Okay, so go ahead and start putting your questions in and I'd be happy to start answering them. Um, I'm actually also going to just pop this link really quick into the um, live chat so you can click on it easily. Planetlevelandon.com. Perfect. Cool. Um, let's see. So Ronnie said, do you have any recommendations for bonfire night? I heard it's like English 4th of July. Are there fireworks? Yeah. So actually, um, bonfire night in London. So what happens at bonfire night is that, let me get this back open just so I know that I can see myself. So uh, for those of you who don't know what bonfire night is, it is also called Guy Fox night and it happens on the 5th of November. It is a yearly British tradition. So Guy Fox was back in, I think it was the maybe the 1400s or the 1600s, him and his crew uh, attempted to blow up the Houses of Parliament. So what they do on bonfire night is they, um, villages across the UK will spend like a couple months building up a huge um, pile of like tree, stuff from trees and uh, branches and everything. And then on bonfire night, on top of this huge pile, they'll put like a straw guy fox and then they light the pile on fire and it's this huge bonfire and um, then the guy fox goes up, <laughs> goes up in flames too. So it's, it's a really big thing in the UK. Um, bonfires can't really work in London obviously, but there are fireworks all the time. So Ronnie, you're right, yes, there are um, loads of fireworks actually. Does, uh, the city doesn't get packed with tourists. Um, it will be, it should, it's not like, because they're in parks that are a little bit more outside of um, the touristy areas, it's, uh, yeah, you it will be fine. 
So you can go to Battersea Park for them. You can go to, um, I was just looking at the list actually the other day because I did actually put information about Bonfire Night in the that guide that I was just talking about, the bonus guide, as one of the events to do in November. Um, but you'll find there's there's loads of fireworks everywhere. And um, yeah, it's you should definitely check it out when you're here. It, that's a good question. Um, George said, do you know which parts of London do concerts take place or which are London's most famous parks? Okay, so let's do the concerts one. So um, there's kind of a mix. There's some, some of the most popular venues are, there's um, the O2 in Brixton, but there's also, there's like Electric Brixton and a couple other music venues in Brixton, I believe. Camden also has some of the, um, not like as big uh, places to watch shows. There's also the Lyric and Hammersmith. A lot of people have seen a few shows there. Um, there's the O2, which is in North Greenwich, and that is like where the big shows are. They're like the massive, massive ones because it's a stadium, essentially. Um, and there, sometimes there's like smaller live shows in, uh, Camden's probably the best place, but also there'll be some stuff in shortage sometimes. Good question. Um, Jessica, would you recommend spending a day in Oxford? So I haven't been to Oxford yet, but loads of people do really like it. So I would, yeah, If but definitely spend at least a day. Don't do one of those tours where you stop there for like two hours. Do at least a day there. Um, cool. Craig said, hi Jess, I have a job interview in London this Saturday. What are the two prices like on the weekend? Should I get a return ticket or would an Oyster card be cheaper? Um, well, I don't know where you're coming from. Cause so the Oyster card only works in London, don't forget. So if you're coming from outside London, you probably won't be able to use the Oyster card. But during the weekends, um, the tube is this just the same off peak price, but trains are usually a bit cheaper, but just depends where you're coming from. Emily said, how cold is it for New Year's? Uh, it varies. It's, I mean, it kind of just depends. Like usually it's not super duper cold here. I don't know where you're from. So it's, I guess it's all relative, but, uh, but then also it could be really cold. So just, it's hard to say really. Um, cool. Vanessa said Lumiere is every two years, even years. I thought it was every year, but I'm not 100% sure. You'd have to check the website. That's a light show, Lumiere. I haven't been to it yet. Um, cool. Oh, HM Queen. If I'm trying to book the Stansted Express, there is a train diversion on the day I return. What does that mean? So it means that there must be some kind of constructions or something on the... Um, rail. So if they're not, if they're letting you book a ticket still, that's fine. You probably, it's going to tell you though that it's going to take longer or it'll give you instructions as to what that means. It should say right on the website. If not, then just get in contact with them. Um, Vinny, are you planning on doing a video for disability access tourism? That's a really good question, Vinny. Um, so I've been thinking about this a lot because I don't particularly think London's very good for, um, people who are disabled to get around. I mean, I can't even imagine what it would be like to be able to take the tube and everything. Uh, I have a friend, even just helping her with the stroller has been such a struggle. So I, I think about that all the time, actually. Um, I don't personally have experience with that, but it is something eventually in the future I would like to do, whatever in some kind of, um, in some kind of capacity. Uh, Vinny, if you have questions, though, if you email me, I there's a, one of our community members who went came about, I think she was here last year. She got around with a mobile scooter, and she said she's always happy to talk to anybody who has questions about it. So if you um, shoot me an email then or a message or whatever, then um, I can put you guys in contact if you want, if that's helpful. Um, Paul said, I'm going to London this September for my anniversary. Looking for a recommendation for a romantic place for dinner, but not too expensive. So hard to say what too expensive is because it's all relative to everyone, isn't it? Um, I do have a video, Paul, about romantic things to do in London. I think that is the place you're going to want to go. So um, there, the, what I'm going to say, there is a restaurant here that is um, – deemed as the most romantic restaurant in London slash the world or whatever. I did have my anniversary dinner there this year, 
It's called Close Majority. I do mention it in that video. The only thing I would say is that I think it's only worth going there if you're in the room with the trees. And if you look at the photos, you'll know what I'm talking about. We were not in the room with the trees and it wasn't as cool. So um, that's what I'll say about that. But I did have a couple other um, restaurant recommendations in there. Duck and Waffle is really good. It's, I don't know, again, I'm not sure what expensive is because it's all relative to everyone. But I, don't th I think it's quite reasonably priced for, and the food's really good there. So that might be a good one too. But you have to really book in advance. It's really hard to get reservations there. So they book two months out. So on the day you want it, you need to be on that website and book in that day. Okay, cool. Um, Alvira, so um, I'm not sending the presentation by email, but you can watch a replay of it. I will, if you've signed up for the alerts, you'll be able to watch. I'll send you the, the link to the replay automatically, or it'll just be right on my YouTube channel. So you're good. Um, oh, Vega, yeah. So Vega's asking about a romantic day for my anniversary. Yeah, exactly. Um, go, that video will definitely help. Um, because the video is not just about restaurants, it's also activities and stuff to do that's also romantic. So that would be a good thing for you to watch. Sorry, it's so dark. I have like this light here. It's not really helping very much. Also, it looks like I'm super blurry because my wife, my Wi-Fi is just terrible here. But I think you guys, as long as you can hear me now, then that's the most important thing. Um... Esperanza, what area do you recommend to stay at a hotel as inexpensive yet still beautiful and wants to avoid any tubes? I don't know how you're going to avoid any tubes. That's going to be really hard. Um, buses are good, but they take way longer than the tubes do. Esperanza, I have a whole um, video series about where to stay in London, so that's going to help you. And download the free ebook that I talk about in there as well. Um, cool. So yeah, I put the link in there in the live chat so to the um, where you can get the, the guide with the bonus. So if you need that, you can click on that or it's going to be in the description if you are watching this after the fact. Um, okay, I'm just trying to find another question. Oh, um, Tripax DC said, is standing on the wrong side of the escalator a mistake tourists make in London? Yeah, but also not even just tourists. Like, non-tourists make it when they're maybe had a little bit too much to drink or just like are getting a little cocky yeah definitely make sure when you're on the escalator for the tube or any escalator if you're gonna stand and not walk down stand to the right of it the escalator otherwise you're gonna have people be like excuse me like I get so irritated when people not just tourists though but I get so irritated when people stand in the area where the, on the left when you're supposed to be walking down that oh my god everyone gets so they like they don't not many people say anything, but they just get so angry. So yeah, make sure you stand on the right. You'll see all the signs that say it too. Um <laughs> cool. Oh, I'm so glad that you guys um love the Facebook group. Uh Dave, Galermo, Penny, you guys are the best. Um Oh, Craig, okay, about your job interview in London, and I heard that Waterloo Station is closing 10 platforms. No, uh, not until the 5th of August, so you're fine. You're good. Um, hi, what's the common dress to wear in London? Who I've asked. So um, I do have a video about this. It's probably easier if you go and watch that than for me to explain. But essentially, and I don't know where you're from, but um, people wear... Uh, dress up a little bit nicer I think than well I'm American so compared to in the US um, and yeah watch the video it's probably gonna be the best thing then besides me trying to explain it cool oh I love that you guys are chatting in the the chat with each other that's great um, okay cool I always see more questions at the bottom now uh, oh, George, is it worth it to drive a car instead of public transport? No, definitely not. 100% don't do that. There's When you drive a car in London, there's a congestion charge during the week, and that's 12 pounds um, every day. And if you don't pay it, you get paid, charged like 120 pounds or something within 24 hours. Um, and it's just the traffic is just so bad here. Definitely take public transportation. Don't worry about a car. If it's like late at night, I'd get Ubers and stuff. But besides that, don't worry. 
Um, Kelly said, would you recommend having cash while in London or stick strictly to cards? Good question, Kelly. So I would have like 40 quid on you for a quid is, um, like, bucks so it's like pounds so just like have that much um that way if you s just go someplace that doesn't take cash or it might be quicker to pay with cash something some a lot of markets take card now but just in case then if you pop into a market it's better to it's quicker to have cash so but you don't need any more than that because you can um use cards very easily here that's a good question um, Anna said, where's the best places to go for shopping in London if I'm visiting the first time? So um, I really like Carnaby Street. It can get kind of crowded, so try to go like off-peak times, not on the weekends. Carnaby Street's good if you want a mall, the Westfield malls. There's two of them. They're massive, and they're all like all the popular high street brands, and they're really nice malls. Um, uh, if you want like quirky uh, vintage and stuff, you could go to Shoreditch. There's loads of vintage and thrift stores there. Um, you can also go, Notting Hill has more like higher end boutiques, Notting Hill and Westbourne Grove. And yeah, that's probably, those would be my, my biggest um, recommendations for shopping. Oxford Street is the most busy shopping street in the world, but it, that says it all really, it gets really crowded there. So if you can kind of try to avoid that, I would. Um... Oh yeah, good tip, Dave. Dave said, make sure and put a travel alert on your card before you go, which he means that before you travel abroad, make sure you call your bank and tell them that you're going abroad and using your card abroad. Otherwise, they it's gonna they're gonna block your card and they'll be stuck without a card. Good tip. Um, is there parts of London that are dangerous? Yeah, there is, but you guys probably won't experience or get to them. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it. You're, you'll be fine. I, d I wouldn't really say there's any any place in particular. Probably the only place I would say is um, that you need to be careful that tourists do to go to is if you like to go clubbing and you want to go to Ministry of Sound. It's in this area called Elephant and Castle, and it's not particularly safe. So I would say try to avoid that. Or if you go there, then um, get an Uber there and then get an Uber back or a taxi. Um, Jessica said, what's the best way to get from London to Paris? Is it better to take the train? I would take the Eurostar, Jessica. Um, it's really easy. It's only two hours. It's super fast. I love taking the Eurostar. And um, the train station is St. Pancras, which is right next to King's Cross Station. And it's a really beautiful station. Uh, yeah, I definitely would say you can take a bus, but it's really, it's a long, long bus. It would be cheaper, but it's a long time. I would just pay the extra. Uh, cool. Penny said, would you ever consider offering itinerary advice or making a mock itineraries based on age? So yes, I am thinking a lot about this now that I've, we've pretty much almost finished everything with the love and the, um, local guide to London, Penny. So, um, I do can I can do consultations. I do do those. Um, they're called London London trip planning consultations. Um, if you go on my website, Love in London, you'll see. If you search on it, you'll see the page about it. I can do that. Um, I would like to create itinerary, so I, I probably will try to do that at some point. Yes. So um, I can't remember Penny when you're going to be visiting. It might not be before you come, but. Uh, yes, I have thought about that and I will be reaching out to you guys to get some more insight on what kind of stuff you'd want to see in that, but definitely. Um, yes, Betty, yes, Furphy. <laughs> um, unfortunately, I don't have time to, um, I got bills to pay, so I can't do it for free, but yes, it, it is. Yes, I'm glad that you're saying you would pay. Yeah, yeah, go on my website or shoot me an email. Um, I can send you the info about it. Um... Jesus said, would you recommend to visit by train from London, Stonehenge, then Winchester? Um, it's, a lot of you know my thoughts on Stonehenge. I don't particularly think it's worth it. A lot of people do, though. Uh, and also, I'm not sure. I've never done Stonehenge to Winchester, so I don't know what that's like. Um, try not to do too much in a day, though. Just remember that because you want to actually experience and enjoy what you're doing. Uh, 
Uh, DIY home and garden projects. Hello, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. Hope everything's well. Um, yeah, can you suggest a food tour? Sure can. Uh, the Eating London food tour, 100%. I always recommend that one. It's really, really good. It's not the cheapest, but I think it's worth it. Um, it's in East London, and you get a really good mix of amazing food and also history. And um, you're, when I went on it, there was a really nice mix of London locals that had like lived in London for many, many, many years and also tourists. So 100% it's called Eating London. You can tell them Jess sent you from Love in London. Um, Elvira, what's your favorite touristy place in London? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, maybe South, South Bank is kind of, I would consider to be touristy. I really like South Bank. There's loads of stuff on right now too with the summer here. It's just like festivals and food trucks and everything. I really do love it around there. I also love Covent Garden. Um, I do try to venture off of Covent Garden Piazza though. If you're going around there, make sure you visit Seven Dials and also make your way into Neil's Yard. Uh, Kelly said, is there a general time most shops open in London? I live in the mid uh, Midwest and most shops don't open till 10 a.m. Uh, um, I think it depends. It's probably around 10 a.m., but it depends on what the shop is too. But yeah, I would say probably around 10 a.m. ish, roundabout. Uh... Ronnie said, how would you recommend coming from Heathrow Airport to central London during peak hours? Um, oh, you're welcome for answering your last question. So, well, it depends on where you're trying to go. If you, if you go on, oh, can you guys see me? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, just making sure you can still see me. If you, you kind of can't avoid it. Can you, you have to, I would just take the tube. If you're, if you happen to be staying in Paddington, then take the, you can take the, um, Heathrow Express. Otherwise you kind of just have to take the tube. And then if you, yeah, you kind of have to, um, or get a taxi, but then in rush hour, it can be quite expensive. But, um, yeah, if you use Google maps, figure out what your routes are and then kind of balance it from there and then use the time stamp to, to figure out like what the best route is when it's rush hour. It is, it's, it's a thing. I won't lie. It is definitely a thing with luggage. So if you have a lot, you might want, if you can afford it, maybe just splurge for a, um, Splurge for a taxi. Um, cool. Awesome. I love the chats you guys are having. Amazing. Yeah, a Heathrow Express is, well, it's not expensive if you book ahead. You book ahead it's not expensive and um the tube might be cheaper but it's not going to get you to the same place it just depends on where you're going um oh diy home and gardens will the oyster card cover the train to manchester no it's just london so you'll need to get a, like a paper ticket to get to manchester good question oh joel you're welcome for all the advice uh, all the advice amazing thanks for the thank you uh Sasha said, which supermarket is the best for a small budget? Um, pretty much any of them besides Whole Foods. Maybe Waitrose is a little bit more, but you'll be fine. Just, just, um, and not like convenience stores. Obviously, convenience stores are more expensive. But there's even like small grocery stores like Tesco and um, Sainsbury's that are like neighborhood ones. And they're the same price as the regular ones. So you'll be good. It's not like in New York where there's like stupid expensive grocery stores. They're all, they're all quite reasonable here. So you'll be fine. Is you said, what's your favorite activity during holidays? Mm, am I allowed to say laying on the beach by the pool? Um, anything that involves like beach and sun, I love that. So London's a weird pick for me, but I'm not on holiday in London, I guess. But yeah, probably that. And also, oh, and eating, obviously. Oh, that's all I ever want to do. I just want to eat. I don't really care about like touristy things and stuff. I just want to eat everything. Dia said, is it better to go to Carnaby slash Notting Hill slash Camden Town on a weekday or on the weekends? On a weekday. Uh, yeah, definitely on a weekday. Weekends are busy. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Um, Jessica said, how long do you think is ideal to visit London for a first timer? Obviously, it's dependent on the person's interest, but what 
do you think would be a good amount of time to get a good feel of one? And you know, Jessica, that's a great question, but it's so hard to say. I mean, there's like people that live here for years and years and don't get a, I don't know, get a good feel, I guess. That's kind of relative. It's like kind of a subjective thing, I guess. But, um, like at least a week for sure. I think if you spend a week here, um, you'll kind of start to feel a little bit more like you, you really get the hang of stuff and you get where everything is. A couple weeks is even better. And then a month is just like you feel you really love it here. You'll really love it. Uh, cool. Dave, are you making friends in the chat? I love it. Hi, Evan. Good to see you. Driving in London doesn't seem any worse to me than in New York. Um, yeah, probably not. New York's pretty crazy, but, um, it's different because it's way more expensive. You don't get really told in New York, I guess, unless you come from outside of New York. And, uh, yeah, there's, cause we have the congestion charge here and also parking in central London. Well, in central New York, I guess is also a blood of nightmare. Oh, Penny. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Shoot me an email, Penny, or just wait for my, one of my emails and reply to it and I'll talk to you about it. Amazing. Yeah, I'm happy to help. Um, cool. I think I might have gotten everyone's questions. Which is good. We are, I know we're on about an hour and 15 now, even with my delay of how long it took for us to get, get going. Now I know, just use the headphones. I was trying to use my fancy microphone. Maybe that was the problem I was having. And also restart my computer before I actually do this. Um, oh, Doug, I forgot you were live tonight. Don't worry, that's fine. No worries. Uh, Esperanza, staying in a hotel for a month too much. Would I need to switch hotels? Because you can stay for that long, I think. But I don't think you'd want to. I would I would go for an Airbnb. There's also um, like service departments you can get. Uh, you're going to save a lot more money, I think, if you get an Airbnb, though. Because, well, first of all, you're going to have a kitchen. So you don't have to eat out all the time. I think you'll get sick of eating out all the time. And it'll be really expensive. And you'll have like, you can have like a little living room and stuff. And you, a lot of times Airbnb hosts, if you book for a month, they'll give you a, a nice little discount. So I would try to try to do that or a service department. Sarah said, do you catch yourself speaking to your husband in a semi mock accent ever? Yes, for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely trying. <laughs> That's a funny question. Yeah, I definitely do. And when I've had a few, I'm like, I imitate my friends and um, I think it sounds really funny, but I don't think they do. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Amy said, are the buses just as busy as the tube during peak hours? They're, uh, it depends, but they're not as bad. Um, I prefer buses during rush hour than the tube because at least like some of them have air con on them. And um, you, yeah, I usually prefer getting on a bus. So, but you might have to wait for a couple to go by. It just depends. I would, if you can make the bus work, make the bus work. Do that. Good question. Um, <laughs> Douglas said, don't go near that Primark near Marble Arch. I went there and got lost. It's so big. Yeah, the one by Tottenham Court Road too is massive. I don't even go in there anymore. Okay, cool. Oh, um, oh, Jessica said, is Primark a super touristy shop to visit or do locals go? Yeah, the locals go, they go too. The Oxford Street ones are touristy, but locals shop at Primark as well. Um, yeah, loads and loads and loads of locals do. So cheap. I don't particularly shop there anymore just because of like, um, not to put a downer on it, but um, their uh, labor ethics are really bad. So I try not to rush up there anymore. Um, oh yeah, Craig, that's a good um, tip about for cheaper um, grocery stores. Although I don't know how it, they aren't really in central, but Aldo um, and Lidl, Iceland are cheaper. Yeah. Sainsbury's and Ad Asda's are more common in this in central London. Uh, Cool. Okay, cool. I think I'm going to end it if nobody else has any. Oh, Larry said, how is emergency medical care for tourists handled in London? So um, make sure you have travel insurance before you come here because um, even though healthcare is free for us and people in the EU, it's not for anybody outside of the EU. So you are going to have to pay for healthcare here if anything happens. Um, it's 
if, for tourists, it's just you're just a regular person. So um, you just go to what's called A and E, accident and emergency, which is the emergency room, and uh, it's the same as in the U.S. That you have to wait depending on how bad you are. There are also walk-in clinics, so you can ask about that. And usually, if you go to A and E, they'll direct you to a clinic if you're not too bad, and it's open. Um, yeah, so that's it's kind of the same. And if you need to, God forbid, ever dial emergency number, it's nine nine nine. Cool, amazing. Oh, I love all the chat on here. Great. Cool. Okay. I think I got everybody. Um, cool. Yeah, I hope everyone found it helpful. Uh, don't forget the links in, um, the link is going to be in the description of the, uh, I'll just put it actually in here again. If you want to have a look at the, um, where you can get the bonus, the free ebook. And, um, it will, so you can do that for 48 hours, you can get that bonus. So if you're thinking of getting that guide, that's when you should get it, it is within 48 hours. And uh, then you can get another free thing on top of everything that's already included. And if you have any questions about any of that stuff, you can always shoot me an email, obviously, and I'll get back to you and um, answer anything that you have. Awesome, oh, amazing. Oh, so good to see everybody. Thank you. And it's um, so good to catch up. Thank you for joining and being a part and being so patient. And I hope everyone has a great night. And I will um, speak to you again in probably the next few days. Have a good one. Bye, guys.